Hi guys! So... Hi! It's us again! <laughs> we just finished filming uh, the video that's going to be up before this, but we wanted to go ahead and upload and film twice in one day uh, since we don't usually get the chance to talk that often. But uh, we figured... this. Remember how I said this was going... I was going to figure out how to do an, the show in a different format? She's the guinea pig because she's the guest co-host for the day. And... Today's episode of Which is Better is Moana versus <laughs> Encanto. I'll be defending Moana. And I'll be defending Encanto. So, okay, let's go ahead and start with the main character themselves. Now, Moana. Right. Now, since you're the guest and this is your first time on the show, you go first. Okay, um, you're gonna have to uh, explain to me, uh, uh, how this works because you and Billy usually do this. Basically, uh, which is better is compare. It's, it's not choosing a winner, but it's comparing either so, either movie and basically saying why we think one is slightly better than the other. Okay. All right. So um, as you all know, if you've seen the movie, if you haven't seen either movie, I um, recommend you to go watch them so you can understand this video. But um, so. Mirabelle, you know, of course, is part of a very magical family, but there's a problem. She does not have any powers, although people like to speculate that she sort of does. She has this really wonderful connection, you know, with a Casita and everything, you know. Casita, you know, helps her out just as much, but just slightly more, and... I shouldn't say Casita is her babysitter because Mirabelle is like 22, um, but she's mainly by herself, you know, throughout the whole the whole movie, and uh, you know she always has a Casita with her and everything helping her out. Um, and talk um, about um, and talk about the emotional journey she goes on and like compare that to Moana, but well, I suppose. The one thing they have in common is that they both want to try to be more, you know, than what they're set up to. Like, for instance, um, Minabelle is trying to prove that she is just as special as the rest of her magical family, and then Moana um, wants to uh, prove that she can be so much more than the leader of her island. And mainly because she wants to go beyond the reef and, like, you know, journey like they used to, and yeah, it's only when she discovers like what's going on with the island, like she tries to get someone to, you know, hear her, to listen, and then after that, like that's what leads her to going on to the adventure, and like I, I would, I give you, I, you have a point about Maribel, but Moana, like, she's, she's wanted to be, she's been told what to do her whole life, and has. Practically, like, I'm imagining, like, Mirabelle, she feels trapped. Only, like, in her case, like, it's a lot more extreme because, to quote Rapunzel, she's stuck in the same place she's always been. So I imagine that, I imagine for, after a while, that starts to get, you know, old and she she doesn't want to be the village chief. She wants to travel. And, like, you know, mm. she's, she's the chosen one. Like, the water chose her, which has its own repercussions later on the film. And I kind of feel like um, Casita and uh, the ocean are similar, because I wouldn't say Mirabella is necessarily trapped, per se. Um, her family, uh, the, the town, is just very dependent on their family, because, you know, they're always helping out the, t the town and everything. Um, everyone's always using their powers to for the benefit of the people in their town, and I think that's really sweet. Um, but, um... Uh, throughout the movie, um, something is very wrong with Casita, you know, there's cracks, and everyone starts lo losing their powers and everything, and everyone thinks it's Mirabelle's fault because she's under the impression that she's not good enough. Which... She don't, she'd only get that impression from Abuela. Which, we'll get into that when we get into the best, when we get into the villain category. But as right now, best song. So, since Moana has, like, two solo songs, I'm going to be talking... I'm mainly going to be covering uh, 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 How Far I'll Go, 
because that's the one most people know about from the song. Like that's what Disney, like that's what Disney advertised the movie with. <laughs> and as for her, obviously, walking on a miracle. I mean, waiting on a miracle. <laughs> walking on a. <laughs> oh my god, Levi! Can you imagine like that was? Waiting on a miracle. Can you imagine if that was Lynn's first? If that was like Lynn's first shot? Hmm. Walking on. Waiting on. <laughs> right. And yeah, then, yeah. then uh, so basically, uh, How Far I'll Go is essentially like Moana's I Want song. Like, because you know, all Disney princesses have their I Want song. And if you uh-huh. want to, if you want to count Maribel as a Disney princess, which she kind of is, because she, she act, commits an act of heroism, which is one of the, is which is what. Aren't really royalty, but they're sort of treated as such. So I'd say she kind of is. And like, how far I'll go is essentially like, it's like, it's like the modern day. It's one of the modern day versions of the classic I want songs. Back, before, like back when I want songs were kind of dying out with the Disney breed. Because while yes, uh, for the first time in forever is kind of an I want song, with things like I like let it go. Like, that kind of wasn't what Disney was doing at the time. And, like, like by the way, I just like to preface both to movies we're talking about have one thing in common. Lynn Wilmer Miranda yeah. wrote the songs for both. Oh, yeah, she did. How about that? Which is kind of ironic, because the first, if you remember the first episode, it ha- both films had one thing in common. Jack Black was in both films. So this that could be the that could be the way to connect to both films. Anyways, uh, now I basically discussed why I prefer uh, How Far I'll Go, Waiting on a Miracle. Why do you choose that? Why do you prefer that one? Well, um, <laughs> it's kind of a, a lot to I think about because she technically has um, two solos, even though all of you kind of involves uh, the whole family, but Waiting on a Miracle um, is her, like, solo, solo, just her song, and it happens right as, you know, um, her youngest cousin, Antonio, gets his gift. He's an animal whisperer, so his room is basically a whole jungle uh, full of habitats in which uh, animals can live in and everything, Um, and Abuela says, come, let's take a picture. So she feels jealous. Call Mirabel into the picture at all. Well, she doesn't. She's, she kind of feel, she feels jealous, but at, it's not jealousy. It's pro, I think the word's like envious. Right. She feels left out, you know, um, uh, because uh, even the people in town, you know, kind of just brush. She's off. just there, so, and like, oh, um, uh, speaking so, of, uh, my hero, that actually brings me to a connection. Uh, Mary Bell is very much like uh, Deku from My Hero Academia. How so? Because like the whole like the whole first part of his plot line is like everyone else like almost everybody else in his world have a quirk, which is basically their version of their gift. And he was born quirkless and never got one. Oh. So yeah, that's yeah. that's essentially what like and that's why I draw the parallel, because he was also waiting on an air call. And it did come, but I'm not gonna give any spoilers. She hasn't seen my Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, next category. Uh, next category. Best villain, and so the and villain is kind of stretched in her, in her version of the version because, Wells Bruno is the outcast. Uh, I forget her name, but um, Abasita or how do you say it? She's the clear villain. You mean Abuela? Yeah, her. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, it's ob- like Taka may be the villain, but he's not the villain at the same time. Hmm. Like, like I shouldn't say she, she because Tafiti. Well, well, yeah, it's like she's a she demon, but yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, Abella is mainly just you know the uh, ab- abusive one who you know expects way too much out of everybody and and, it's, and the reason it's not, how it's not only louisa that feels so much pressure it's everybody including Annabelle. yeah i mean like 
the whole reason House falls apart at the end of the film was because of her. Basically, like, because like I'm not blaming. How come I'm not good enough? And that was, you know, in, in, in her song, she was, you know, like, uh, like holding all these emotions in because she used to be the favorite, but you know, she touched that door and didn't get a gift. No. You know. <laughs> though, if we want to do that same category, uh, the dad can also be considered the villain, but not really. But like, it's the same concept, really. I mean. He Augustine isn't no, no. Augustine no, 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 at the end of Alfaro Go, if you remember. I get that, but there's a difference between protecting your child and just straight up being overbearing and repeating the cycle. And then there's the and there's the precious character of the show, of the movie, and for me, ob- obviously, the precious character is Maui, because, like, come on, he, the guy is... He, like the guy is a jerk. Like he's he's a complete douche. But at the same time, he's also a precious douche. <laughs> <laughs> well, my uh, a precious uh, a character guy, the, Bruno. They're, they're, they're <laughs> hey, aren't I defending this one? Yes, but you have to admit Bruno is also precious. Yes, he is precious. But I'd say um, the most precious one for me is Antonio because oh, definitely. He's so and um, he uh, doesn't hold Maida Bell against anything, unlike her family. Uh, What's well, up, her mother? Where he's scared to go up to that door because he's worried it, it isn't going to work. And, um, and Maida Bell just holds his hand and walks into the door. And then at the end of the movie, Antonio leads her to, to the house, to the front to the Which, front let's just, can we just talk about, okay, uh, ne- we already talked about the songs, so next category should be like, Best outcast. So technically, that would also be considered. That would also be considered Maui. Well, actually, no, the grandmother is somewhat the outcast in Moana. So best. Yeah. Out- and if you've seen Encanto, you know who the outcast is. <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. No, no, no. And no. like, the grandma, like she's just she's just living her best life, like. Like, let's just be honest, she she loves the water, and like, in the stingrays, and, like, I love how in How Far I'll Go Reprise, she becomes, a, she becomes the spirit of guiding Moana out to the adventure. Uh, fun fact, the high school I graduated from, our school mascot was a stingray. Hey! I was, <laughs> and I was stuck at Lonely Old Cass High, just kidding, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Hey! <laughs> you know when I had to move! <laughs> okay, uh, next category, best ending, which te- technically they both have the similar endings, just done uh-huh. slightly different. Hmm. So I'll let you go first. Okay. Uh, well, as you know, um, the ending kind of stretches out into uh, Casita is you know broken down, Mirabel ran away, and then Abuela finally finds her. And uh, she uh, she tells her what really happened, you know, w- w- with her abuelo. They fell in love. They had their, their first uh, three kids, um, Julieta, uh, Peppa, and Bruno. But then the village uh, got attacked, and so abuelo tried to protect uh, protect them, and he unfortunately died in the process. And so once Minabel understood that, that abuela had went through her own pain too, they went back uh, to Casita, and the whole family, including the entire town, helped them build Casita again because they all did it together as a team. While welcoming back Bruno, might I add. Yep, yep. They they bought they bought Bruno back too. And um, I just wh- want to say a small thing about Dolores. Like, she can't keep a, she she can't keep her cousin's secret. 
for a few minutes at the dinner table. Oh, but if Bruno wants to live in the wilds for ten years, that's his business. Really, Dolores? I mean, I think I think she kind of learned to just ignore Bruno, like, because like she's like, should I? Like, I can hear him, but do both quote Frozen too? I can hear you, but I won't. Well, so <laughs> <laughs> right. I never thought I'd compare Frozen to Encanto. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. Oh, actually, there is a, a, a comparison. Um, I, I saw it in an article. Isabella and Elsa are kind of alike. Kinda, but also for my ending, like Moana, basic. I think my ending is better, mainly because like yes, it's they they do. They have similar beats to theirs. Moana comes back from the end of the adventure, is now the Voyager, as seen as Maui now has her on his, has her tattooed on him. And, which by the way, how the hell does that work? How does that work? He, he, he gets a, a tattoo for everything he's accomplished. Yeah, but Moana accomplished it. Doesn't she get the tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> She's not a demigod. She's a human. And Moana, I, Maui was originally a demi was originally a human, if you remember. Yes, I remember. But then you know the gods took mercy upon him and made him a demigod. And then, but anyways, I digress. Uh, no, after that, uh, basically she comes home and then like somehow convinces her family to upshift and abandon not abandon the island, but do what they were meant to do originally, and just start wayfinding again. And hmm. getting the see the reprise to away away that well, you ain't know where we are <laughs> that song and honestly like, like the rules of this is simple we're not debating we're just we're not choosing a winner so down in the comments if you want to choose a winner you can but <laughs> we're just we're just saying our our points here so. I just really like the part where um, when she put the doorknob back, um, the casita gained its magic again. And which is so I, photo, which is the so. The floor lifted up and I said, "Laugh, I'm Which is so. Which can we talk about how amazing that was? Like, yes, she didn't get her door originally, but when she put the house, the doorknob back. Yeah. She got the, the they got that's what restored the house. Essentially. Uh huh. And I truly believe that is Mirabel's gift, her connection to Casita and her family. Though you can also point out that she also can see the past, since if you remember when she's telling the story, she gets transported back to that time. Remember, because during we don't talk about Bruno, they were she sees like people shift from one to another, and you know. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Which we can talk I... about that plot hole in a sec, in a whole another video. But since we're now already eighteen minutes into this video, I think, like, like with Billy and me, like I'm not editing this. Like everything you see, like us do, it's going in. <laughs> so, the, I'm pretty. So, um, should, should our last category be best song? We already had best song, but if you want to go with like that. Uh, definitely, you're welcome. Huh. Because I, um, well, then again, I should also he, point out, also honorable mention for my cat for my song, uh, know who you are, or. Huh. Because not only it's one. For me, it's a tie between surface pressure and what else can I do? Yeah, I'm. Then again, I, I kind of prefer we don't talk about Bruno, but that's everyone's go-to song when talking about that movie. So, right. Does anyone even remember what else can I do? I can't remember it, but I but I will admit I was actually just listening to Under Pressure. So Service Service, service pressure. pressure. Yeah. So anyways, uh thank you guys so much. Then when you guys discuss discuss down below what what do you think who do you think won? Like what movie won? Cuz again, we're not picking a winner. We're just No. Um, we're just discussing. That's you what... decide. And next, like I said, next episode, we're not talking about the shitty movie, but the musicals. 
Dara Van Hansen versus Be More Chill. Uh, not shitting. <laughs> okay, hasn't seen the movie. I refuse to. <laughs> you <he> should. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And now, yeah, now with this video, bye. with this video being twenty minutes long, I'm gonna end it here. I'll see you when I see you. Bye.